All right. When you are doing this position, what does your central rate tell you to, uh, where's your central rate directed? Is it over the third? Yes. Okay, it's gonna be directed towards the second metacarpal, exiting the, exiting the fifth. Okay, you guys need to write this down somewhere, okay? So the central rate is gonna be directed at the second metacarpal, exiting the fifth metacarpal. In any of the lateral positions, whether it's fan and extension or fan lateral, <clears throat> enters the second, exits the fifth. Now, if we took again the book to the literal meaning, if we're entering the second, okay, look what happens here. Our collimation just includes, just slightly includes the longest finger right on the edge, but look at all the space that we have here on the side. You guys agree? It's more apparent when you're doing the fan, I'm sorry, the fan and extension because look at all the space that I have back there. Okay, so what, what do we need to do? Place the part where? The Place the part in the middle. Get the hand in the middle of the frame. So you have equal shadows on all sides. Again, because if we took it the literal meaning, Enters the second, exits the fifth, we have all the space back here. So just put the body part in the middle. <clears throat> all right, questions on this position projection? <coughs> Is it getting cooler? A little bit. A little bit? <clears throat> All right, lateral inflection, these are easier to achieve with traumatic patients. Again, you don't want the front, you'll, you know, proper position is that you want them extended, either extended or, you know, fan lateral. But if they can't do that, just have them place their hand on their side. Don't worry about positioning of the fingers, just place it on the side. Because again, we would rather do with something than not something perfect, at least we have something. In either case, where's the central rate directed? Second, 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 MCP. Second through fifth metacarpal, okay? Again, if you took it to the literal meaning, look at all this. Okay? So put the hand in the middle of the image receptor, in the middle of the field, at the level of the second metacarpal, the lanchial joint. Does that make sense? Okay? The level of central rate will still be the same, it just won't be directly on top of the structure. But it will be at the level of once you, you know, move the, the hand in the center of the uh, collimated field. Okay? <clears throat> All right. The AP oblique bilateral. So now we are exposing both hands. Uh, this is do done to study rheumatoid arthritis or different types of uh, degenerative bone and joint diseases. <clears throat> you got two methods, which is the Norgard method, where the digits, okay, so it's palm up, slightly in a 45 degree angle, okay? So palm up, slightly 45. When the fingers are extended, it's called the Norgads. When the fingers are relaxed, it's called the ball catchers. Okay, again, got to study different types of degenerative diseases of the joints and the bones. Okay. We're gonna open up the collimating field to include both hands. Now the central ray is not gonna be directed at some kind of physical structure. It's gonna be directed right in the middle between the two hands. Markers. Doesn't both? matter, right? Just put a marker here so we know which is the left and which is the right hand. So you're not to put both, you just put, no, just put one. No, that's kind of, yeah, overdoing it. That's overkill. So just put one marker, okay? All right. Now, this is a little, a little bit harder to do, right, with moving your hips, okay? So shield, because the lap is gonna go over, over the table, underneath the table, so shield the groin, okay? But you can still have them turn away so their eyes and their thyroid are not getting any type of scatter radiation. <clears throat> is there, uh, there is a thyroid shield, correct? Mm -hmm. Can you still use that? You can use the thyroid shield. Yeah. Absolutely. But the reason why I wouldn't, 
you could. Okay, let's just say you could. I'm not going to discourage you from doing it. If you want to use it, then go ahead and use it. Why I would say why you, sh why you shouldn't use it is because we're going, dealing with low KBs. So you're not going to get some, a lot of scatter radiation. But I mean, if you can minimize it, then by all means use it. Okay. <coughs> all right. So central ray is going to be at the midpoint at the level of the fifth metacarpal phalangeal joint. We are assessing both, um, both hands. And we know it's an oblique because of why, based on which criteria. Slight concave. Abies, flatness, what about the metacarpal heads? Oh, is this a true oblique? No. Okay, it could have been better oblique, right? It's almost, it almost meets the criteria of what? Either a, an AP or PA, right? It's only a slight oblique. So it's not a real true oblique, because a true oblique is something like this, three, four, five. Okay, two separated, but there's some slight liquidity there. Okay? That's two? That's three and four, eh? Huh? What did I say? Oh, I'm sorry, here. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. That's one and that's two. Two and three are separated, but three, four, and five are not overlapping. Two, three, four, and that's five. So there's going to be. Three, four, and five should be overlapping. Yeah, so, okay, so going back to what we're saying, is it a true oblique? No. Okay, because there's a lot of separation going on. I'm almost out of time, so you're all right. <laughs> I don't want the rest of the world seeing my mistakes. <laughs> all right. PA wrist. We've done the fingers. We've done the hand. Now let's do the wrist. The wrist, even a, now we don't need the entire hand. We're just going to collimate to the wrist. Okay? Collimate to the wrist. Now, should we still include the radius and ulna and the metacarpal bones? The answer is yes, because we want to include adjacent structures. Okay? So the area of collimation is generally about a three by three or four by four. Okay, but you guys can picture it. You can see what you've included in there. But it's usually about three by three to four by four. Okay? The central ray is going to be directed at the mid carpal area, so just right there, just in the middle, middle of your wrist, which is located right here. So somewhere here right at the wrist joint, that's what I call it, okay? Now why are my fingers brought underneath my hand? Why isn't my hand straight? Why do I have them doing this? Okay. Well actually there's a reason why we do that, that's because it's relaxed, but the book will tell you that it brings the structure closer, closer to the, the image receptor when you curl your fingers underneath. So it decreases OID. Oh, yeah. Okay, it decreases OID. And you'll also notice there that they placed their marker on the lateral aspects, so on the front side. <clears throat> so separation of radius and ulna are apparent with minimal superimposition of the joints. And we know it's a true uh, PA because of the equal concavity on all sides of the metacarpal bones. <coughs> so that's the part you take Cynthia home. Okay. PO oblique, 45 degrees, that's all you need. Get a sponge or have the patient turn the rotate the wrist 45 degrees from Supinated position, we're going to go which way? Which way are we going? External. Externally or? <coughs> laterally. Laterally. So it's going to be an external or lateral oblique. Um, to assume that any triangle is going to be 45 degrees? Nope. Because we have, we have 15 degree triangles, we have 30 degrees triangles. Are they labeled? Are they what? Are they labeled? You can just look at it. So just in anything between you know, vertical and horizontal. Mm -hmm. This is equal 